G'day folks. I know this is a bit of an impromptu video, but I'm just doing this for uh, Jay the Aussie and anyone else who's interested in old TVs and repair and safety aspects of it. Uh, he posted a few questions in a video and I just thought that I'd do this to help complement it. I've done a lot of work on televisions before. I did work experience in an electronics shop, as I may have mentioned. Uh, this TV was last serviced by the same electronics shop that I, I uh, did the work experience in, so because it's got one of the older style warranty labels on it, it's probably uh, from when I was there. Haven't tried it before. I uh, brought it home from the junkyard and put it aside, so who knows what it'll do when I turn it on. They've damaged the pull knob on it, so I've got to try and pull that out with a pair of pliers or something. But everything's there. Very old, probably early 70s. Uh, yeah, let's get, get this thing fired up and see what she does. I'll put the camera there just in case the fire works. Shouldn't be, but you never know. No obvious leaks from the high tension. Alright, gone green though, the green gun's hard on. And those lines, I can't remember what that is, I think it's a high tension or a horizontal output problem or something. Yeah, she's a bit messed up. Just needs a good rebuild capacitors, that sort of thing. Too old to bother rebuilding though now. Yeah. Oh, well, it didn't go bang. Doesn't smell like smoke. Let's whip the back off. Alright. Now initially, initially I thought this was actually a Sharp or a Sanyo or something, but it is an AWA. Uh, Mitsubishi colour tube. Obviously a colour. Um, there's a few ICs on the board, but it's mostly transistors. So it's pretty old. Uh, no UHF tuning. Just the standard BHF. Uh, what main thing to remember when working on televisions is the tubes are a capacitor. Uh, and they do store very high voltage. I think they run typically 25,000 up to 35,000 volts, depending how big the set is and it's dangerous all the way from around the transformer on those wires all the way up there to the tube around the anode so don't touch any of that unless you've discharged it first and I'm going to show you how to do that shortly and this applies for any cathode ray tube even something like this old oscilloscope tube has an anode and it will hold charge if charged up by an EHT transformer so if it's got a vacuum tube like that in it or like your regular television discharge it to ground and that's this braiding in here that's the best place to attach to it because it's a capacitor you've got negative side positive side on the inside insides lined with lead and other materials phosphor other stuff there's no sodium or reactive metals in them though uh, the neck board's been resoldered and scrubbed down so they've obviously done dry joints and other stuff it's got modern capacitors on it so it's had that all rebuilt but there's a lot more dried up looking ones in here. Now plasma TVs like this one will also kill you very quickly as well. So don't muck around with them unless you know what you're doing. That's why I'm not fixing them at the moment. Uh, they have high voltage pretty much across everything apart from control down here. And those capacitors will store charge for a while after it's off. So don't touch anything for a while. I don't know the exact discharge time and I don't think you could discharge these just with a lead. You might risk damaging something. Likewise, don't plug and unplug connectors while it's charged or you'll fry boards. Okay, now I don't have a lead with an alligator clip on it like I used to. But just take an old multimeter lead. I know these probably aren't rated for a full 25 kV, but I've never heard of anyone getting a shock from them and I've never had a shock myself. So I'm just pulling back this braid. I'm just sticking the multimeter end underneath it and stick it under the rubber cap. See this tube's bled off at the charge, but if it was charged you get a pop. Just quickly turn it back on, turn it off and just demonstrate what it sounds like. Turn it on, the tube's 
charge. And you see I've broken the dust now and it's arcing out. A bit of moisture on it. Now we're off. There we go, a little pop. But this is what Jay the Aussie is experiencing with his set. What I've done is there's just a leak through the dust under the cap, so it's tracing from the cap to ground. Yeah, I don't know if that'll show up, but... See it arcing through. Even just bumping the EHT leads enough to start that off when there's a dirt, dirt around the cap. And the only way to resolve that is to discharge the tube and take the cap off, then clean around it with metho and seal it back on. Often you actually have to wipe a bit of clean, clear silicon around the cap to get it to seal properly. You see the heaters in the guns are working. That's alright. There we go. I tipped it forward so you can see it a bit better. But to reinstall the cap, just push down on it. Try and hook, you got to hook one side in. It's usually a two-hand job. Yeah, it's going to be a two-hand job, but you just got to get one side in and then uh, snap the other one in. It's really easy. I'll grab a rag and some metho and clean that up. Sometimes you have to put a bit of nat natural, like, clear roof and gutter silicon around the cap and then stick it down. That's sort of a last resort if it doesn't stop arcing. And you'll also see those two metal case transistors down there. One of them would be horizontal output and I think the other one would be vertical. Uh, when that mica sheet that's underneath it breaks down, it starts arcing between the case and the heat sink. If the case is live and the heat sink's ground. That can cause a loud ticking sound, along with insulation breakdowns on the transformer, arcing through the ground or other nearby components. If that happens, your transformer's toast. Although you can silicon around it and try and botch it up for the time being, but they generally start arcing over internally like an ignition coil. And once they go bad, bad, that's the end of them. Now also check to make sure that your HT lead is clipped in properly and not touching anything that's grounded or just other parts of the chassis as well. The only time I've been zapped by a television, and it was a full 25,000 volts it was on, the lead was attached to the tube but it was very long and coily and it was sitting back against a metal bracket in the housing which wasn't earthed. And stupidly enough I go and attach an earth lead to it and then go to attach it to an oscilloscope. Pow! Apparently that's what happened because I don't remember. It hit me that hard I just don't remember. It went straight across me. And that's the only time a TV set's really... Yeah. Let's just say you learn something if you do get zapped. You always learn something. But it's survivable. I've never heard of anybody being killed by the charge from a tube, but it's not to say it can't happen. High voltage mains, yes. Always disconnect your power and remember that a lot of these parts are always hot. Yeah, I'm going to have to silicon that and give it another clean. It's just too much moisture in the air and probably too much moisture in the metho. But yeah, that's what happens when the cap starts breaking down. The other thing could be to put more dry silicon grease around it. That's another option. Yeah, it's settling down now because the moisture's evaporating. But yeah, arcing out around the flyback and uh, horizontal output transistors, pretty terminal for a TV of this age. I mean, it's not really worth buying the parts in and fixing it. Like, a new flyback transformer costs as much as a new CRT television now. Assume you can even get them still. It's all LCD. Everyone's got cheap second-hand LCDs or plasmas now, so that's why they end up in the junk pile. But I hope you learned something from it. Just play safe. And remember to discharge those tubes before you do anything on the set. Take the back off, discharge the tube. That's my rule of thumb.